Hey everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today we are chatting a wee bit about some drama I accidentally uncovered regarding Meghan Markle and the firm. So it would seem that there was some tensions behind the scenes about Meghan Markle and the royal jewels. The Queen had made a decision to not give Meghan Markle full access to all of the royal jewelry or the, the collection of all of the fanciest, most priceless jewels um, that the crown, the queen, and the royal family have. So I want to start by just reading to you from this article. The queen made Prince William personally aware of her decision to ban Meghan from wearing jewelry from the royal collection, sparking further tensions between him and brother Harry. Her Maj, I don't like when they say that, Her Majesty has in the past gladly loaned iconic pieces to Princess Diana and Kate, but sources say she has been less than impressed by some of Meghan's behavior. Last night, our impeccably placed royal insider revealed, this is a surprising situation that has been going on behind the scenes over the past few months and has caused tension and upset, especially for Harry. It is at the discretion of the queen and trusted advisors which items in the royal collection she chooses to loan out and to whom. Aspects of Meghan's behavior, including before the royal wedding, caused resentment with forces within Buckingham Palace. To be perfectly honest, the Queen herself was not impressed with some of Meghan's demands, especially as a new member of the family. As a result, Buckingham Palace has decided that not all items from the Queen's royal collection will be opened up to Meghan. As a part of that situation, the Queen informed Prince William that the items from the royal collection worn by Princess Diana would not be immediately made available to Meghan. When asked for more details on this situation, a senior royal insider said, It is true that Buckingham Palace did not want all the items in the royal collection to be opened up to Meghan at this time. Now, keep in mind, she was only just in the door here with the royal family. She had dated Harry for, it was it less than two years before they announced their engagement, I think it was. And then once they had gotten married and everything, she was out doing royal engagements and stuff for a very short period of time before she and Harry quit. When you are a noob, you typically do have fewer privileges than those who have been around longer. But it goes deeper than that because Catherine, Princess of Wales, not only had earned her stripes, so to speak, for having been around that world for much longer before marrying in, but also she had been married to William for many years by the time Meghan had come into the picture. But also at this time, Catherine was the future Princess of Wales and married to the future King, making her future Queen. So her having wider access makes more sense. She was attending d completely different types of events. She was attending state dinners, for example, and she has a more prominent position. Let's read more from this. The senior source added, the queen likes Meghan personally, but this is all about the hierarchy. She is showing that maintaining the correct order and precedence within the family is important. Even if Meghan is the most popular woman in the world, she is of a lower rank than Kate. She can be difficult. The Duchess was stopped from wearing an emerald tiara at her nuptials last May, leading hubby Harry to explode, what Meghan wants, Meghan gets. That's just gross no matter who you are to say out loud. Even if you feel that way about your spouse or your partner or your loved one or yourself, you don't want to say it out loud. It will inevitably look bad no matter what. She eventually wore a diamond and platinum headpiece chosen by the Queen. Sources at the time said Meghan can be difficult and has high standards because she is used to working in a Hollywood environment. I would don't totally disagree with that. She was like way down in the pecking order on a, on a TV show. Now, TV shows are successful and there's so many really successful, really fabulous actors who are on TV. I'm not downgrading that. But TV is a lot more of a grind and shares a lot more similarities to a regular job than movie stars do. In fact, a long time ago, they used to be considered two completely different realms. You had movie stars and you had TV actors and actresses. They were considered to be in a completely different ballgame for a long time. And it's not like Meghan Markle was a headliner of her TV show. She was part of an ensemble at the time, not the star of the show, she was not a huge part of the plot lines in every single episode in, in terms of like the big players of the show. She was like sixth or seventh in the credits list, which does matter in terms of your prominence in the TV series. 
So it's not like she was in a position where she was controlling things and making lots of demands and able to be like, no, this costume is, and, you know, she wasn't able to do so much of that. TV shows move at a much faster pace. You're not allowed to really make a stink or you're going to get fired from it because they have so much work to do so quickly at such a quick pace that it's not compatible with diva behavior. There are now wider limits in place over the royal collection, which resulted in Prince Charles telling Meghan not to wear a tiara on a visit to Fiji in October. The art collection, amassed over 400 years and comprising more than a million objects, is held by the ruling monarch. Many are inherited, while some are the Queen's personal items. So the incident that they were mentioning was when was this one here. Meghan Markle was told not to wear a lavish tiara by Prince Charles over fears it was too extravagant. Now, they were going to a dinner in Fiji and Kate Middleton that same night was wearing a stunning headpiece for a state dinner at Buckingham Palace. There's a few factors to that decision beyond them being cautious or hesitant to have Meghan wearing and flashing a lot of jewels right away. Part of that is when they are holding a state dinner, it is a big deal and they want the headlines to be focused on that. State dinners are expensive and important and there's a lot of diplomacy happening at state dinners. They are very important, not just to the monarchy, but to the government in general. So they don't want to take shine away from that. And it would have most certainly set up a situation of rivaling tiaras or who shone brightest in their sparkly jewels that night. That's what the headlines would have been. Instead, they were able to make it primarily, at least cover story wise, about Catherine Princess of Wales at the state dinner and the state dinner itself. Bill on Sunday claimed that the 37 year old had hoped a tiara from the royal collection would complete her outfit as she headed to Fiji last year. 70 year old Charles stepped in advising her that showing off wealth in a commonwealth country could be seen as extravagant. A source claimed Meghan did not understand all of this because she was new to the role, so Prince Charles told her that it would not be appropriate. It was, a ver it was very kindly done. Instead, pregnant Meghan opted to wear diamond earrings for the formal dinner in Fiji along with a flowing blue dress. It was in stark contrast to Kate Middleton, who on the same night stunned in a large diamond and pearl tiara once worn by Princess Diana at Buckingham Palace. It is one of the 37-year-old's favorite headpieces, having worn the Cambridge Lover's Knot tiara several times before. The headpiece was made in 1914 and given to William's late mother Diana by the Queen as a wedding gift in 1981. The advice from Prince Charles to Meghan comes after it was revealed the pair had a strong relationship after he walked her down the aisle for her wedding to Prince Harry. The two are even said to have a shared interest in art, culture, and history, with Meghan reportedly help helping Prince Harry reconnect with his dad. But it's not the first time Meghan has made headlines over tiaras. The Queen reportedly warned Harry over his bride's attitude after a row over which tiara she would wear for their wedding. So the article is trying to put a positive spin on it. So this is one other thing that they had going on behind the scenes, that Meghan was probably upset. Maybe Harry too. Harry and Meghan were upset that they were not being given access to these jewels and priceless pieces the same way that, that William and Kate were. which. On the surface, uh, for a normal family, it would seem a bit odd, with the exception of the newbie rule, you know? Even if you're new, whether you're new in a relationship, family situation, a job, a community, a church, anywhere that you're new, you do need to earn some trust first, let people see who you are before you expect special treatment or rule bending or all the goodies that you see other people getting. Maybe part Maybe a job that you're joining has some perks, like the more senior people who have been there the longest maybe get first dibs on something or get a little bit more flexibility here and there with certain things. You can't expect that until you also have dedicated time to that company, to that job, and shown them that you are worthy of those privileges because those are the exception or the privilege awarded, not the norm entry level thing. So the same thing goes here. The Queen's royal jewel collection is not just for anybody who marries into the family or anybody in the family at all. These are priceless heirlooms and have significance when worn. So it's not just given out willy-nilly to anybody and you have to earn those privileges and earn that respect via building trust. It just makes sense. 
But behind the scenes, surely Harry and Meghan didn't understand that, and it was part of why they started making a stink. I'm 100% sure of that. But interestingly enough, they didn't mention that on Oprah, probably because people would have understood that that's normal. You don't get the same privileges as someone else when you first marry in, when you first enter into an organization. But also this point explained here, obviously, as obviously Kate, as the next Princess of Wales and a senior member of the family, does have them made available to her. That's not to say items won't be loaned to Meghan in the future if situations change. Meghan has been able to wear jewelry from Diana's personal collection, which she allocated to her son's future wives before her death. As a result, Meghan has worn Di's butterfly earrings, gold bracelet, and an aquamarine ring. Her engagement ring also features two diamond stones from the princess's personal collection. William and Harry's relationship has deteriorated over the past year, partly due to clashes between Kate and Meghan. But I have a feeling that this was part of Meghan's animosity towards Kate, especially that she felt like Kate was being treated so much better than her and was blinded by that and couldn't see the reasonable explanations as to why these decisions were made. It does make sense if you are going to be the future king and queen that you have far greater amounts of privileges, especially if you're like adults. I mean, obviously Prince George is a future king, but he's not gonna have access to jewels at 10, 11 years old. He's gonna, he's gonna have to wait. So even for future kings, there's going to be restrictions in place because these are, as I said, significant things. They have meaning, they are priceless, they are important, they have heritage intertwined. I don't think it would have been a good look for Meghan to have been wearing all these sorts of jewelry that she wanted anytime she wanted. I don't think it would have been very respectful to people like Catherine, Princess of Wales, who probably had to wait quite some time before she was given access to these sorts of privileges. She was probably very gracious and polite and waited for the invitation and waited for guidance or approval or simply asked, what would you like? me to wear to said state dinner rather than just go in there and try to take over and and touch everything and do some extra stuff. Megan had already established not only a reputation for being rather difficult and brash, but there were rumors that she was a bit sticky fingered and taking a lot of freebies and doing certain things that would have made someone a little nervous to loan out a priceless jewel that had significant meaning to the monarchy. It makes sense. It also has to make you wonder if that was part of the behind the scenes conversation claiming that it was about race. Obviously, these things, as we know, is about behavior, not race. But it makes me wonder if that was part of that. What do you guys think about it? That's all for today. I hope you have a happy day ahead and I will see you in the next video. Bye!